So we're here on St Kilda studying Leach's Storm Petrel, which is one of the um, smallest seabirds in the world and they've really got their headquarters here in uh, St Kilda. They nest in burrows and crevices here on the cliffs and they only come out at night. At each nest birds take turns to incubate the egg, one bird stays in the nest keeping the egg warm for up to five days at a time, whilst its partner is away feeding at sea. And when the partner has collected enough food it returns to the nest at night and the pair swap over. The numbers breeding here on St Kilda have been declining quite steeply during the last few decades for reasons that we don't really understand. So our task is to fit tiny tags to the birds to track them on their feeding trips at sea to find out where they're going and what risks they might be facing as they commute back and forth to the colony. So we've we found the nests by using playback. So that's where we've got a small speaker, we've loaded onto it the calls of both the male and female leeches storm petrel. So we'll go around playing these calls and if you get a response from a burrow you know that there's a petrel in there. Some of these can just be exploratory behaviour, prospecting, but if you get consistent responses you've got a good idea that that will be a breeding site and then we can go on to monitor it. We also use an endoscope which is a camera on a long wire that we can push into the burrows. So we're just about to use the endoscope to see who is in burrow number 25. This one's quite an easy one to endoscope because the birds are really close to the burrow entrance. Some of them are really difficult and you have to stick your whole arm in. Um, I can see that there's an adult in here along with its chick. A few days later we head back to the colony to catch birds that have returned from their foraging trips to retrieve tags we've deployed earlier. The tags are attached to the tail feathers with thin strips of tape that need to be removed very carefully to avoid damaging any feathers. The tags are really tiny so they don't affect the bird's behaviour. And once the tags are safely removed the bird is then released. Back in the lab the tag is connected to a computer to download the data and once the data are processed they show us the remarkable journeys that these tiny seabirds are making every few days as they commute back and forth from their nest on St Kilda to the feeding grounds out at sea which as we've now discovered are up to several hundred kilometres away and a bird might fly over a thousand kilometres in the course of a single feeding trip. This information will help ensure a safer future for these amazing birds.